my thumb. At last, the punk decided to leave me what was mine. This film would prove once and for all that LaGrange, the unscrupulous politician, and Marcos, the drug runner, were guilty. My brave guy act must have impressed old Fatso, because he literally vanished into thin air. He'd left a clue behind, though, which would lead me to him later, a book of matches he must have dropped during our scuffle. There were some odds and ends in Tony Marcos's pockets. A key, an electronic diary, and other stuff that would help me with my investigation. I called my buddy Dee Dee, the computer whiz. This genius knows everything there is to know about everybody. I was sure he'd be able to make sense of my discoveries. I told him about my adventure at the sauna and the chase with Buffalo Bill. He suggested I tell him the rest in person. You never can tell who might be eavesdropping. Good old Dee Dee. At the time, I thought he was being kind of paranoid. I couldn't even imagine anyone tapping my phone. But in fact, someone had been tailing me, watching my every move right from the start. I crossed town and went into Dee Dee's dump. Unluckily for me, three tough guys were all prepared for the eviction officer to arrive, and through one hell of a mix-up, they thought it was me. Come on, Betty, let's kick the crap out of them. Ah, oh, hell, there's no way out of here. I've got to hide. That won't do much damage, did he? If I switch it on, they'll think I'm inside. Show your face, jerk. I'm gonna skin you alive! Ready when you are, Betty, my sweet. Come on, sucker. Come out and play! when I get my hands on you. Damn, a dead end. It's too late to turn back. I wonder if this switch still works. This electrical cable looks suspect. welcomed me in his normal cheery way and confirmed what I thought. The electronic diary was full of coded information, but it would take some time to decode. The key, on the other hand, came from one of the Buena Vista chain hotels, and there were now three of us who knew about it. The third thug from the dump had taken his revenge by ratting me out to the police, who were already after me since they'd found my ID papers at the sauna. Inspector Van Dale sent his men racing after me as if his life depended on it. And soon all the sirens in town were coming down the street right at me. Even the stranger who had been shadowing me right from the start suddenly dropped off the face of the planet. I had to find a way out of the neighborhood which now, thanks to the cops, was completely surrounded. 
Van Dale must have received the strictest instructions to find the killer fast. And someone somewhere had clearly decided to make me the fall guy. Yeah, but they obviously hadn't reckoned on dealing with Max Gardner, Houdini II. I shook that bunch of Boy Scouts off my trail as easy as if I were playing hide and seek at summer camp. I was beginning to feel like I was the hunter and the hunted. Right now, I held the clue to Marcos's hideout in my very hand, the key to room 227 of the Buena Vista Hotel. The young lady told me that the girl in the next chair had stolen her key. My fake ID was working wonders. The little thief sheepishly agreed to give me back my key. I've managed to ascertain from the register that room 227 was occupied by a lady and that the next room was reserved in the name of a private club. So it's a woman in room 227. Probably Marcos's lover. 225 is reserved under the name of Club Zanzibar. Zanzibar. I know that name from Marcos's odds and ends. Club Zanzibar. At last, I've got the whole name and the right phone number. I found Club Zanzibar pretending to be from a hotel. Some guy named Sergio told me that room 225 was reserved for his boss, Mr. LaGrange. Paul LaGrange. The politician, of course. The boss at the Zanzibar. Thanks for the info. Lucky I didn't come across the closed mouth tub. Tended to be Mr. LaGrange and canceled his reservation for room 225. I finally got hold of the key to the room next to Marcus. The last I was going to find out who was in there.
I called the person in the room next door. It seemed I had gotten her out of the tub. I pretended that I had the wrong number, and then I tried to check out the situation by doing a bit of smooth talking. She was pretty cagey, but I wasn't going to give up that easily. <laughs> 